you cannot get away from the fact that with the spread of the kingdom also you see a, a economic displacement within the print with that the principalities around uh, begin to experience that's as a result it. Of the that's it that's it that's right hello and welcome to unlock the kingdom within you this podcast explores the profound truth about what it means to be born into the kingdom not a religion On this podcast, we challenge the religious and denominational norms which shackle us from expressing the liberty of Christ by exploring the kingdom, the ecclesia, and citizenship. If you're born into the kingdom but lost in religion, then this channel is just for you. So thank you for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. I think that the the necessity citizenship creates in and of itself a framework and a mechanism for the Commonwealth to really come to the surface Mm. um you know whenever you see a move of god on the earth and the revelation of the kingdom specifically comes into into the i guess becomes clear for people you automatically see see the volunteering of what their resources um and the dedication and the commitment to those the resources to support the kingdom coming through and i think that what we found is that within the context and framework of the church, you've seen pockets of that. You've not seen that real sense of citywide effect that can come about when the kingdom does emerge in, as an expression. And so yeah. I think Commonwealth is a, is a key element of this. It's like when a person apprehends the value of citizenship, you're not having to pressure them to support the work. And, and the, yeah. because the, they, they don't see the work necessarily as something that is unique to a particular church, they actually see the all-encompassing work of the kingdom and, and that their part is actually a very small part within the context of that. So I think we will yeah. see an emergence of a new type of commonwealth from the people. We'll yeah. see a, a much more intelligent way of managing resources and ensuring that resources get to where it needs, where the kingdom needs it the most. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay. And, and I think that's going to be interesting as well. But I'm always surprised uh, when I, I, I'll go into a church, for example, and I'll, whether it's 50 strong, 80 strong, 200 strong, and I'll think to myself, I wonder how much untapped resource is here. Now, I'm mm. not saying that in terms of their own lives, but ha- that translating into the a- whole activity, because we still have a situation at the moment where you go into regions And there's plenty of churches there, but there's no impact in the region. Right. Right. It's highlighting the point that the commonwealth of those communities is not is not flowing. It's not flowing outwards. It's flowing in some, but it's not flowing in all. So there's a question there about we go back to this theological point. What's going on in the theology? Yes, that's right. That's limiting the scope of how far that resource can can stretch and go. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, a very, that's one of the things that we'll be looking forward to in, with this with a citywide approach to building the kingdom. I think we're going to see a huge expanse of, of flow and channeling of economy that we've not seen before. And that that's wealth. And that's not just dealing with finance, it's dealing with skills and experience and knowledge, um, all driven towards ensuring certain outcomes. And I think being outcome driven is going to be crucial for us. Yeah, um, I, think, I think those are good points. You know, um, again, come back to the whole question of, of the theology of it, because I do think this thing needs to be taught and caught. Uh, in, the, in, in the Old Testament, God wants to form a nation out of Israel. So Moses leads them through the Red Sea. They come to Sinai. He gives them the law. Uh, because you cannot have a nation without laws. And so the thing about that is that the laws are etched in stone, it is not really personal, so they break every law. Yeah. Jesus Christ, the greater Moses, goes through the baptism, just like Israel is came through the Red Sea, and he goes into a high mountain, the Bible says, and he began to teach them in Matthew 5, 6, 7, the Beatitudes. Actually, what he's doing, he's talking about the, he's talking about the laws of the kingdom. He's talking about the constitution of heaven itself. And he's describing things that provides a framework for kingdom operation in the earth. Love your brother. If someone smites you on one cheek, turn the other to him. He's describing the whole spirit of the new covenant. And I believe that these principles 
understanding the heart of the new covenant because you cannot you cannot you cannot demonstrate the kingdom unless you got the heart of the king you know and unless you partake of the blood and the body of the lord and that mystery of partaking of who he is so that you become become who he is in the earth and as a consequence you manifest it now what you describe about the resources it, it is true there are resources and sometimes you know just let's face it people are more controlled by the spirit of mammon than they are by the that by the laws of the kingdom you know i was looking at it the other day uh um, israel when israel came out of bondage out of egyptian bondage and they came into the wilderness under moses uh, it was not just a spiritual deliverance it was an economic deliverance it was economic because under pharaoh you had what you call an oppressive economy where pharaoh took from them and made slaves of them for 400 years mm. nothing given to them of course we know they got back pay when they left but you you now enter the the, the wilderness and no man is falling from heaven what is coming out of a rock is a kingdom economy is a different kind of economy and to tell you the truth we have not tapped into that as yet mm. you know and it's something that needs to be tapped into and i believe that th- th- that there is something powerful spiritually that powerful uh you know there is something overwhelming that's going to happen when we step out of being controlled by the economies and the systems of this world because even though it was under the kingdom in the wilderness they still wanted to go back to pharaoh where that kind of economy was predictable at least i got three meals for the day but now in the in the wilderness i'm under a kingdom economy i am i'm believing god i'm trusting god is a whole different mindset what's in this what's in what yeah go ahead i was going to say also in addition to that you know going back to acts um you cannot get away from the fact that with the spread of the kingdom also you see a, a economic displacement within the print with that the principalities around a begin to experience that's as a result it. Of that's it that's it that's right and and we have not seen that in our communities we've uh-huh. not seen that in many of our communities um and in fact the reason why that persecution takes place in many cases is because of that economic displacement where uh-huh. there's a, actually a shift right. in, the, in the way people direct their resources from one principality to another principality mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and um you know obviously we're not espousing that people stop paying their taxes that's not the point but the the, yeah. the issue is is nonetheless you tend to find when the kingdom expands because Christ yeah. is leading it and the the gospel of the kingdom which is the king within his domain is being preached the principality of that region always feels the impact always feels the impact and in fact based on what you just said also responds like pharaoh and that's oppression that's it. it's that's it's right. straight away responses to oppress the people so that they come back to the existing lord within that region and don't yeah. continue yeah. to to reject them for the for the greater one so i absolutely agree with you i think that there there is something to be said and maybe maybe the maybe the challenge is is that you know um we've got to begin to evaluate the fact that the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom if it's not testing the borders of other regions under principalities you have to say is it the gospel of the kingdom because it's designed to do yes. that it's a territory yes. we can't get away from the fact that it's a territorial kingdom expansion yes. Yes, you know uh, jesus yes. himself you know, right the way through the new testament um whether it be through the apostles or whether you see in the book of, Re- of revelations territories are a major thing and that's why i like the fact that it says the ecclesia in the territory when it explains it it doesn't say the the ecclesia in the localities in a region where there's an expectation yeah. for the lordship of christ to be reflected the sovereignty of christ to be reflected in that region by the ecclesia so in fact the ecclesia there cannot have its own title cannot have its own label because it's there yeah. to express the king's sovereignty in that remit and that is its responsibility yes. um, so it's going to yeah. be very it's going to be very very interesting to see how how the ecclesia unfolds i still think it's yeah. going to struggle i think it's going to 
because it's going to be made up of, of people transitioning, I think we're going to see that in the reflection of the that's type right. of agency yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Go, go yeah. ahead. I, I think the, the heart is going to be key in this thing because uh, all of a sudden, I mean, we, we talked about disturbing the principalities and powers. Think about Jesus. He begins to heal the sick. So therefore, he's robbing the health system that's probably controlled by Rome of income. He begins mm. to feed people with five loaves and two fishes. So now he begins to disturb the economy of Rome. Uh, Matthew, the tax collector, and other tax collectors uh, are getting converted. So less mm. revenue is coming to Rome. <laughs> you see what's going on? That every, every kingdom expression has economic repercussions. Yeah. So there's no doubt about it that this is an economic shift. And um, even Paul, uh, in the book of Acts, he goes, uh, he goes to, 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 to one of those cities. I think it was Athens. And he preaches, and the princess Diana falls. And when Diana falls, it upsets the whole economy of that region, and they want to kill it. Yeah. Because uh, it seems as if there is a some kind of connection between the true preaching of the message of the kingdom and the economic, economic life of that community. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. Um, I believe that we've got to really... Uh, Ask the Lord to really help us in this transition. And I believe as we go forward, the heart, the heart of the believer, and also the readiness of leadership to handle it on this level, the dependence on the power of the Holy Spirit, and understanding that we are here to birth a new world and to take up that responsibility. Mm. You see? Let's mm. face it, people have been uh, We've been we've been entrenched with the whole theology of leaving and getting out of here and and just for and because the world is going to hell in a handbasket anyway. And now God is interested in the earth. He's in. Mm. So it means a shift. It means a shift. But I will tell you honestly, and and uh, as as a pastor, as a leader in the body of Christ, getting people's hearts ready, hearts ready for this is crucial and critical. Yeah. Because we're talking about an economy that is more neighborly, one that is more fueled by love rather than avarice and greed, mm. rather than selfishness, where the motivation for getting wealth is not that I will be better than my neighbor, but rather I will be, I'll be able to help my neighbor. Mm. You see, So we're talking about an entirely different shift. You know? mm. Now, I know some people are waiting for this happening in the millennium, but I believe we're going to see some of this happen, you know, uh, even uh, before the end of time. And I believe that we, in fact, well, my my thing is that we are an expression of the second coming of Christ in the earth. I don't want to disturb your audience too much, but that, that we are. No, I, think, you know, I, I agree. I agree because one of the things that I've I've said, which is, which is a, po I think it's the point in which maturity meets. The, the, st the standard of the powers of the age to come. Certainly yes. one of the things in my heart is that whole line about the, that we are engaged with the powers of the age to come is both thrilling but or, or inspiring as well. Because yes. it means that there is a very, you know, when Paul says high calling, he meant a high calling. You yes. know, it, it, yes. it, he, was not meaning, he was not meaning a substandard of life. We go back to the new creation again. You know, I think... Yeah. Awareness of the kingdom in your life, the growing revelation of the ecclesia and citizenship, it, it, it equates to such a personal responsibility that you recognize there is indeed a very, very high standard and that high standard must be met. And it's not only that high standard from without, it's a high standard from within. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so That's right. I think that, 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 you know, often in scripture, there's a calling up, isn't there? There's a, it's this idea of, you know, the Old Testament are called up to mountains. Yeah. Jesus is called up to, to ascend to mountains. And in the New Testament, there's still that calling up. And I, what I love about it is it, it meets the crescendo in Hebrews where it says, you, uh, it talks about us called to, to Zion, the city set on a high hill, and that we're part of the elect. It kind of begins to give us the picture that we're not called to just an abstract top of the mountain experience, but we're mm -hmm. called 
to ascend, to be able to capture the vision of the city and how to earth that as an elect representative of that city in the earth. And I, and yeah. I, and I think that that's the high, what the high calling is about. I think that's what, the, the, what Paul talks about, somebody talks about apprehending this high calling is about, that prize that he's talking about. He's living with that vision in, in mind. He's singing with yeah. that vision in mind. He's, he's burning, his burning desire is conscious of that. What does it look like to earth the kingdom? And I've, I've used language before, like terraform. How, is, how yeah. is your region terraformed for Christ? You know, what does that look yeah. like? How does that work? And, and who do we need? And I think that, that that's certainly for me. And I think another thing as well is for men, particularly, that's an exciting purpose and adventure that men want to latch on to. Right. Men are builders. Yeah. We are builders. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. we struggle sitting in the church week in, week out in liturgy. We want to do something. Now, right. don't get me wrong. Right. There's a need to sit down. There's a need to listen. There's a need to learn. There's yeah. a need to be part right. to. But we want to build. You know, yeah, um, and, and because we want to see the fruit of our labor. We want to see that the results of it. You know, and I think that, yeah. that, that the vision of the kingdom is certainly something that I see drawing men out in particular. I see yeah. men capturing it and seeking to, to connect with others to, in order to build and, and take it forward. So that, that links to a question I do have for you, which is about for many people struggling to find a suitable environment to grow. Mm -hmm. This is a tough mm -hmm. one. I've spoken about this with Tim. And this is partially why I also realize that what's coming on the earth, the reason why it's not restricted to a denomination, it's not restricted to a, a church necessarily. There are, are like Christo, I think there's lots of services that will begin to come through because, because there are people who are struggling within their, their environment, their communities. Now, I don't, I always, I, I don't believe that people want to leave their communities. I think in most cases, people, certainly for myself, I grew up within the church. I love the people within the church. So when people come to a place where they feel that they have to leave, in some instances, it can be down to sin and rebellion. We know this. But there's a context for people who feel that they're, what they're seeing on the inside, it can't be fed within this setting. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that's a something that we're going to have to what, learn to manage because we don't want to lose communities. Right. We want transformation of not just individuals, we want transformation of communities. But I was going to put a question to you. What would you say to those that are within an environment that they are struggling, the kingdom is growing within them, they're yeah. realizing there's a lack of appreciation in the environment they're in. Maybe it's quite a rigid denomination, quite a rigid church. What do you say to them? What's your yeah. advice? To them, yeah, you know, knowing how to navigate those places are very important. Um, I've seen people who uh, who have had to leave certain structures so that they may move on and migrate to the next level. I understand what's going on. Uh, it happened to me personally. Mm. You know that I could not have been doing what I'm doing today if I stayed within the old structure I was in. It was impossible. Mm. And so I think, I think too, that um, what will be important is the spirit in which you do it, that you do not curse labor, uh, even you have, to, you have to leave his house, uh, that, you, that you know how to navigate out of Laban's house. Um, I do believe that some of these structures are going to either have to morph, change, you know, uh, understand what God is saying. And the key thing here is the leaders, the leaders. And that's one of the things I believe that we've got to do. Because we don't want to destroy the lives of people. It's important that leadership gets it. I believe if leaders get it, leaders get it, there is hope for the people. Mm. If we understand that the structure is not something that's cast in cement, if leaders get it and they can change the structure, you can change what they're doing, and, and most of all change their theology, there's hope for the people. But to be quite honest with you, if, if that doesn't happen, I don't see a choice for many people. Mm. I don't see a choice. What I think is going to be important, as I said, is the spirit in which things are done. You know, um, I've seen churches where 
the people have had to migrate and then the leader woke up. And when he woke up, you know, he began to change. So sometimes God has to do that way. And then God has to do that way. You see? Um, but I think too that those who are leaving, the question is, I see where you're leaving from, but what are you going to? And yes. therefore, it's important that you have a clear picture in your mind. You hear from God, but you also understand the spirit in which you're doing it. Mm. Uh, you, that you're not doing it with a with, an, with, with a, a spirit of bitterness or anger, you know, mm. that kind of thing. Uh, so that what you build, because the truth is God is going to give new expressions of himself in the earth, take it or leave it. Whether you call it church, or you call it a community, or you call it an embassy, or you call it an online meeting. Um, I have people on our online meetings who are not part of a church, and they're from different nations. Mm. And the online meeting has become part of their church, so to speak. Mm. You know, so I think the spirit in which you do it is important because in those same church communities, there are people who are redeemed, is the bride of Christ, are people for whom Christ died. And in the back of my mind, and I don't believe it's only in the back of my mind, is how do I reach these people? How do I teach them? How do I mm. enable them to move from where they are to where they need to go? You know, the law of our perception. Being able to help people to migrate. Sometimes, some people will be able to do it instantly. Some people will be able to do it uh, incrementally. But we help people to migrate. In, in our nation, I'm probably trying to help some leaders to do that. You know, and, and doing it in an incremental way. You know. And so I believe the spirit in which you do it is important. I do believe that there are some traumatic times, shifting times, transitional times upon the earth right now. And I do believe it's going to require leadership. That's not just, uh, not just uh, aggressive, but leadership with, with some, with a steady head, understanding that how we manage people is important because you don't want to, you don't want to destroy everyone in the process. You want to help people, you know, uh, you want to be, able to, and that is my heart. Perhaps that, that is my pastor's heart, the soft spot inside of me. But I really do believe that it's important that we help people to navigate. It's like every family. Not everybody is going to get it at once. Not everybody is going to mature at once. But that you continue to abide with each other, teach as a parent, as a father. You begin to father them into mm. the fold, into the things of God. So one of, the, one of the aspects of the apostolic that I believe is going to be necessary is that fathering dimension. We need that building dimension, but we need that fathering dimension to help people to transition. You know, mm. because let's say people have been taught, have been taught, uh, you know, the sky is falling for generations. And then all of a sudden now, they realize, you know, it's not the sky is falling, it's the earth that's coming apart. Yeah. You know, so things yeah. are shifting. You know, they are going to need help. You know, they're going to need help. And I believe that God has a plan for all of that. But again, I say, the spirit, those of us who've seen it, those of us at the front of the line, those of us close to the rod of Moses and he's about to open the Red Sea, realize there are people at the back of the line who mm. are close to Pharaoh's horses. Mm. You know, but we mm. all have to cross. We all have yeah. to cross. Yeah. You know, when, when, when uh, Caleb and Joshua uh, went across 40 years afterwards, when they crossed and went to the promised land, God didn't just facilitate the crossing of two people. He facilitated the crossing of the whole nation. Mm. And if I understand the heart of God, he wants the crossing of the people. Some people will get it early. Some people will get it late. But it's going to require, it's going to require wisdom from us. It's going to require mm. wisdom to do this. You what, know? what kind of, I mean, what kind of environments do you think we need to create to help people migrate? Yeah. I think I think building community. Uh, I think definitely a teaching, teaching, uh, constant teaching, uh, teaching, and then teaching it again, and teaching it again. You know, I think that environment of teaching is important. I think we 
we need to, we need to also give probably uh, prototypes of what the kingdom looks like. Mm. You know, uh, what does kingdom life look like? So, you know, instead of, you know, hating my neighbor, because when I grew up in the Pentecostal church, uh, we were taught that uh, everybody is not saved. It's probably of the devil. They're going to hell anyway. You know, and you, you have and off his attitude. So instead of rejecting those around me, I learned to love and embrace those around me. Because right now I'm embracing people who are not of my faith, who are not of my church, who are not even of my race. I'm embracing. I'm all embracing. I'm embracing. And so we are showing a prototype of love. So now in our church, if someone falls into error, you don't have to sit at the back of the church, you know, and go through some kind of penance. No, no, no. The prodigal son was forgiven and he received the ring and the robe right away. One of the prototypes we've got to give to one is restoration, one of love, one of mercy. Demonstrating what the kingdom is like. Demonstrating the love of the Father. Demonstrating the heart of God. People begin to see this. You know, people come up, and all of a sudden you bring people into an environment, uh, not of religious rejection but one of acceptance. Mm. Do you think... Uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say, do you think that one of the things that I think that will happen with, within the context of understanding the kingdom and citizenship, I think what well, probably what I, I see happening is there'll be a greater understanding of the layers that need, that need to essentially be stripped from the identity of a person because in, in the past, I think we had, a, in many churches, a two-step process or three-step process. Yeah. You are an unbeliever. You get saved. You're now in the church. There's now a program of education. You're part of a liturgy. But there is this yeah. sort of out, out and in. Um, whereas now, I think with the kingdom, there is a greater appreciation of the layers through which a person has grown up and has an identity. For example, you know when Paul says no longer Jew nor Greek, male or female. In other words, we're forced to think about that a person coming in, coming into the presence of the king might have a numerous layers, whether they might be ethnicity, whether they might, oh, fa sorry, family level, uh, ethnicity, tribal level, um, there, uh, classism will come into this as well, and we see Paul addressing classism as well in the New Testament. In other words, the things that impede the development of growth will yeah. need an environment that can see those things and, be, and so have instruments or mechanisms in place to address those things. Um, yeah. And I, rather than allow for those things to be hidden and suppressed, and yet, as it were, erupt, causing problems to the identity of people, which affects their ability to embrace the new creation, embrace citizenship. So I think yeah. one of the, the, the important things is, is then having, that's where the influence of many teachers and many apostolic yeah. capabilities coming in and the prophetic capabilities. You know, I certainly, for example, with, with my own community, you know, I, re I recognize right from the get-go that, no, I'm not going to expect the community to live off my teaching or just somebody else's teaching. Right. Straight away, they have, the, they have the liberty to visit any church. They have that liberty. They mm. have the liberty to engage online with any teacher. Not because I don't think there's good teaching and bad teaching, but actually in the real world, when, you, when your child is growing up into the real world, you can't vet everything they're going to hear. You can't vet everything yeah. they're going to hear. Exactly. The, the key issue is that you're laying the right um, foundation and they have the ability to see and discern and have the ability to ask questions and, and rightly divide for themselves. Um, so I think that those are the two things I was thinking about. One, these these layers that exist in people that we don't often see because maybe, maybe we're not kingdom focused uh, and we're denominational focused. And so it becomes a two step process. And then the other side is recognizing that the more uh, channels of or, or springs of life that is able for people able to engage in the better it is going to be for your community and the people within it thank you for joining our fireside talk about the kingdom my name is frederick tobin and i hope this podcast has been a blessing to you if you'd like to continue to receive fresh insight into the kingdom click the notification bell to follow us 
For further information about the kingdom, visit our website www.unlockthekingdomwithinyou.com to download your free ebook. See you soon.